You've got next. Cyber Monday means great deals for you. Like how did a guy named Smokey get his hands in the 420 rally permit? We've got the video evidence. Hey, somebody called it the cuddle watch and I don't know where that came from. We've got a cute baby with an amazing story. Look at all of this Bronco stuff at a huge discount. Hmm, I wonder why. All these stories are free. But first, about that word gentrification. Kyle is off today. What you see is what you get. No exclusions apply. No exchanges, no refunds. Details coming up next. I mean it. No refunds. By now, you've read and seen much about that whole fiasco involving ink coffee and its sign making fun of gentrification. Here's the sign for the millionth time, but let's take a look at the word gentrification. Merriam-Webster says searches for the definition have spiked more than 2,000% thanks to this whole thing. Online, people like Mike ask, I'm confused. Is that not what is happening in Rhino? What's wrong with the sign? When you look up gentrification, there are different definitions you can pick that fit your view. Some definitions don't mention the displacement of poor people and refer to the improvement of things. Other definitions make direct reference to low-income families getting priced out. If you've never been priced out of your home, had to help grandma with the rising rent, or saw an old beloved business close up shop, you can use that word to say things are improving. To these community members, this is not a joke. But for others, the meaning of the word isn't sweet like the sugar in your coffee. It's long lost, like the very definition of their old neighborhood. Just Kathy Sabin out here in the nine backyard. And guess what? A record high temperature of 81 degrees in November. And I'm standing out here without a jacket with Christmas lights on behind me. Second day in a row with record highs all comes to an end tonight with the arrival of a cool front that will drop temperatures 35 degrees tomorrow and maybe bring in a brief snow shower for the morning drive. No advisories for snow, but we do have a little bit coming into the high country. One to three inches of snow expected. And that snow shower, well, it might move through between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m. So the timing, not great. Increasing clouds and wind tonight are low 31. The snow will occur after about 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. No accumulation, but a big drop in temperature tomorrow before we rebound on Wednesday. A second, stronger, more impressive storm shaping up for Saturday into Sunday and potential for snow here in Monday uh, that could be kind of an interesting storm. In the meantime, we'll just sit back and enjoy the wonderful sunrise and sunset pictures. Right on, Kathy. Black Friday was busy everywhere, including gun shops around the state. The Colorado Bureau of Investigation says gun sales broke some records. We can see this in the number of background checks. This year, the team conducted 4,779 background checks for firearms transfers from midnight until 9 p.m. on Friday. That's 450 more than Black Friday last year and nearly 1,000 more than Black Friday in 2013. The number has steadily gone up since then, too. Nationally, the FBI received more than 200,000 background checks on Friday. That's also a record breaker. They say no politics at the table for Thanksgiving, but that's all over with. The biggest issue right now at the moment is tax reform. Congress is working on it for a look at what's going on in the House. Brandon Ritterman is here to verify some of the biggest arguments for and against it. Let's start with a line you've probably heard from Democrats. They've been screaming from the rooftops that this Republican plan is going to pay for huge tax breaks for rich people by raising taxes on the middle class. But that last part isn't true. The overwhelming majority of middle class people get a tax cut under the House bill. We can show you a simple example. A single person making 50 grand a year who, like the vast majority of Americans, takes the standard deduction. The House bill gives this person a tax cut of $1,100. We tried to mess with that result. The bill kills the student loan interest deduction, which you get to take on top of the standard deduction right now. So we gave this person big, fat student loans to max it out. And the GOP plan still gives them a tax cut, $560. On top of that, we made this person a single parent. Well. We didn't, someone else did, but the GOP plan still cuts their taxes by more than $850. Give them a second kid, the result's about the same. Now it is possible to make this person pay more under the GOP plan, but it 
takes an extreme case. Give them tens of thousands of dollars in medical bills that weren't covered by their insurance, and they might not owe any tax under today's law, but they would still owe it under the GOP plan because it gets rid of that deduction. But that sort of thing would be rare. Only about 7% of taxpayers will pay more under the GOP plan. Almost everybody gets a tax cut to start, according to the Nonpartisan Tax Policy Center, which is often quoted by both parties. That study does say things will get a little less rosy as time goes by. Eventually, almost a quarter of taxpayers will end up paying more because the bill doesn't adjust deductions up for inflation as much as the current law does. Now, part of the argument from Democrats is correct. This plan is a lot better for rich people than it is for the poor and middle class. People in the bottom fifth of incomes get on average a little less than half of a percent tax cut, or about 60 bucks on average. The middle gets a 1.2% tax break, or about $830, and the top 1% gets 1.7% tax cuts, or 37 grand. Now, that disparity does grow over time, again, because of inflation. Then there's the cost. This plan doesn't look so fiscally conservative when you consider the price tag, adding $1.4 trillion to the deficit over the next decade, according to the CBO. We'll wrap up with the best part. The House and Senate could keep making tweaks to this plan all the way into Christmas, maybe longer, which means your conservative uncle Randy and your liberal cousin Sue can start planning round two of the fight they started on Thanksgiving. Here to verify, I'm Brandon Ritterman. Now, if you're wondering, Congress does not have to get the tax bill passed before the beginning of 2018. Even if they want the changes to apply in 2018, the IRS will make changes if it doesn't happen before the year starts. If you've seen Charlie in the Chocolate Factory, you know the golden ticket is a big deal. Here in Denver, there was recently a race to get the one green ticket in the city, a permit for the big 420 rally downtown. He who holds the permit runs the big show. It's a big deal. And some guy named Smokey got his hands on it. So was it fair? Marshall Zellinger takes a look at the video evidence. Of course the wet building had a green hue on Tuesday. It's not who's here first. It's who's at the door inside. Yes, we've, we've been told that. Okay. Bobby Reginelli and his team from Euflora, a Denver area dispensary, had staked out the Webb building for 27 days to be first in line for the coveted April 20th permit at Civic Center Park. The Parks Department let people line up starting at 12.01 Tuesday morning. The doors to the building would open at 7 a.m., the door to the permit office at 8 a.m. We actually had two teams at each door this morning. One of our teams was evicted. The web building has an entrance off Colfax and Bannock, and this one at 15th and Court. Euflora was first in line at both locations until they recorded a security officer saying this. The official entrance for the 420 permits is on Court Street entrance. Uh, the Colfax uh, Street entrance is actually considered uh, loitering for being out here. Euflora left the Colfax entrance. The good news is, I think you and the gentleman on the other side are after two different permits. No, I think he's lying. The gentleman on the other side, the Colfax side, Michael Smokey Ortiz. Yeah, that guy's not camped out here at 2 a.m. for another park. So if the Court Street entrance is the only one to get the April 20th Civic Center Park permit, how did Smokey smoke Euflora? When next continues. It was a cold, chilly fall morning in Denver. Dramatic video from the scene of the controversy. A story about police officers doing the right thing, you know, like 99% of them do every day and don't make the news. Just taking care of our boy. They're the good ones, and they're almost all good ones. And a young businessman believes he's found a way to help those who live in food deserts. Next. After being camped outside the web building for 27 days for the April 20th Civic Center Park permit, how did Euflora get beat by one step? Their fate was determined for 20 seconds. Get it? 420? In this surveillance video obtained by Nine News from the city of Denver, the Euflora team is led in at the Court Street entrance at 7 o'clock and 13 seconds. The, the lady tells us, oh no, we've got to open the other door so that this is fair. 
the security guard who opened the door at court walks over to the Colfax entrance. Remember, this is the entrance another security guard said Euflora could not wait at. Smokey walks in at 701.37. At the same time, Bobby takes his teammate's hat off, and they wait. At 701.48, Smokey walks through the Colfax metal detector. At 701.48, Euflora waits, and waits, and waits for 20 seconds. Smokey wasted most of his head start, but still beat out Euflora by a step. Parks and Rec director Happy Haynes watched from a nearby bench while Bobby pleaded with police. We got lied to and fraudulently moved by their security detail, and this guy gets to get in line? Jeremy, the city is now reviewing Smokey's application to see if he can meet all the requirements like trash pickup, which we didn't really see last year. And they're also reviewing the circumstances yeah. between what we just showed. And I have a copy of the permit right here. And you can't make this up. He spelled his name wrong three times. He never even spelled Michael correctly. <laughs> I love the drama. I love how this video just captured the drama. And so let's see when the city's going to make its decision. Any word on that? The, yeah. the city attorney is dealing with it right now. And uh, Euflora told me if they don't know that they might get it by January 1st, they're out. Wow. We'll see what happens. Marshall, thanks a lot. Baby Axel was born at 29 weeks and spent many more at Children's Hospital in Colorado. There were times his mom and dad couldn't be with him, but baby Axel was not alone. Nine News reporter Anastasia Bolton brings us this story. Hi. Hi. This is the Children's Hospital NICU unit. From the moment he was born. He decided to come at 29 weeks. Little Axel Winch. We were flown up here from Grand Junction August 1st. Needed a lot of love to survive. And they let us hold him for the first time, and we actually have pictures of it, and we were crying, and... From the moment he was born, he had 15 tubes, hoses, and wires. Little Axel needed a miracle. Through his ankles, belly button, nose, mouth, all the way through his body, and it was, it was a terrifying experience. Miracles, as Axel's parents have learned. Axel has died in arms multiple times. Are possible. His nurses have saved his life so many times. Axel couldn't leave the hospital for weeks. His mom and dad had to go back to work. Leaving is heartbreaking. Melissa Winch is a Grand Junction police officer. Yes. Adam, his dad, used to be one. The first time we left, I don't know, I cried. Not all the way home, but <laughs> majority of the way home. You know, it's it's terrible. And But Axel... You are going to be happy. ...was not alone. I know. I didn't want him to be alone. You're smiling now. Yeah. Just came up with the idea that um, we would set up basic, basically a watch. I'm a detective assigned to a bank robbery squad out of the FBI. We would have officers sign up for times um, to come in here and spend time with Axel. You know, he looks so happy each time. Somebody called it the cuddle watch, and I don't know where that came from. I think we would have probably came up with something a little tougher. Uh, but we'll go, we'll go with cuddle watch. <laughs> cuddle what? Nearly 20 Aurora police officers cuddled with Axel when his parents couldn't. And just being able to spend some time with him and maybe get in touch with themselves for a little bit and just relax. I think it was a win-win for, for both Axel and the officers that came in here. But when you look down inside the heart and soul of a police officer, they're there because of love. And they showed the very best side of that here every day. Yes. Right now he's, he's happy and healthy for us. Axel is ready to go home, and for a baby who needed miracles, <laughs> that just might be the best one. I've kind of spoiled our boy now. <laughs> for next. He just wants to be held all the time now. <laughs> I'm Anastasia Bolton. The Aurora Police Department got involved with the family in August, visiting them, raising money for them. Now that Axel is going home, there's only one problem, though. The officers need another baby to cuddle. APD says it's the start of a lifelong friendship. Awesome. A startup that began with the personal story about hunger. That was the reason why we ended up living is because we didn't have enough food. And I think that it plays an important role as to why I'm doing the things that I'm doing today. It's a good time to get holiday gifts for Broncos fans because, well, you know. And an explainer about how Denver looks from space. Next. And welcome back. Let's talk about food deserts. It's a term to describe low-income urban neighborhoods that don't have easy access to a supermarket. In these food deserts, it can be hard for people like the elderly to get healthy food, but 
There's this young guy in Denver named Ricardo Rocha who's been changing that with a new business and his bike. I grew up in Leon, Guanajuato, which is a state in Mexico. I grew up in a small town called Las Ilamas, and it's a, a mountain town. One of the reasons why, you know, I, my family and I decided to uh, immigrate here from, uh, from Mexico was because uh, my dad uh, did not have enough money to pay back the store who had already for months been um, kind of placing groceries on layaway. And it just got to the point where we would pay it back, but by the time we would pay it back, we owed too much. That was the reason why we ended up living, is because we didn't have enough food. And I think that it plays an important role as to why I'm doing the things that I'm doing today. I'll go 21 miles per hour. I think the reason why um, my path ended up in this way is both uh, because of my experiences as a child and as a young adult, uh, along with my families, and, uh, and my understanding for community, community needs, um, and, and my deep passion to improve those circumstances. Abarrotes bondadosa. Uh, Abarrotes uh, in Latin American, a lot of the Latin American countries means a grocery store or a, gro uh, a small grocery store or a corner store. And bondadosa means kindly. My audience is, of course, the Latino community. Immediately with the Latino name, you, you, you latch onto the Latino community, but also individuals who lack access to transportation, individuals who lack access to a grocery store. You can't go to school without, with, uh, on an empty stomach. I'm gonna say about 31 orders per day. Um, that's what our future looks like. Operating out of two additional stores, so we got 40th and Pecos and these four zip codes. We wanna go to Montbello expand there and then we want to expand to the city of Sheridan. Right now there are two employees and they deliver to four low income areas in Denver. Ricardo hopes to hire about 12 more people and expand in areas where they deliver. It's a sign that the Broncos still aren't doing too well. First it was 25 percent off. That was at the beginning of November. Now 40% off all Denver Bronco merchandise at this grocery store. Save on bumper stickers, keychains, jewelry, you name it. Stores are already trying to clear off the shelves. After yesterday's game, Paxton Lynch is out for two to four weeks with an ankle sprain. That means Trevor Simeon will be the starting quarterback once again. And the most Colorado thing we saw today, and an answer to a viewer's question about what the Mile High City looks like from the International Space Station. That's coming up next. thing we saw today was spotted in Estes Park. It'd be a little difficult to hit a golf ball through all of that elk on the golf course. And that is the most Colorado thing we saw today. Our next question comes from a viewer named Roger, who had some questions about a story we aired here on Friday. After spending several hours trying to figure out which way north is on the photo that Paolo Nespoli shot of Denver from the space station, several of us are at a loss. We would like to know which way was north so we can figure out where downtown Denver is. Can you please run the photo again with a few landmarks identified? Of course we can. So here's the original tweet of the front range. Okay, we gotta flip it so you can see here's the north, here's the south, the east, and the west. Now there is downtown, Casa Bonita is right about there. There's the road to the airport and here's the tech center. So now you know. And we got one piece of comment. They should make the 420 thing into a movie. That's from Francois. I got a name for it. Dude, where's my permit? <laughs> Thanks for watching.